Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today we're diving into the SQL X package in Golang. My go-to package to interact with databases is GORM, but for smaller services, I prefer SQL X. If you've worked with the SQL package before, you know it's great, but sometimes it could use a little extra power. That's where SQL X comes in. It builds on SQL and makes your life easier by adding features like named queries, better struct scanning, and more. Let's begin by installing the package. For this episode, we are going to use SQLite, so let's install it. Now that the packages are installed, let's get to the code. For demonstration, we will use these tables, authors, books and members. The author table has these fields, ID, name and email. Here are the fields of the book table. It has a foreign author ID, referencing to ID in the authors table. This table tracks information about library members. Each member is uniquely identified by their ID. We will use SQLX to create these tables. Let's define a variable called tables here. Before we get into the main function, let us define the structures representing the tables. Each struct uses struct tags to match column names in the database. For example, the field ID maps to the ID column in the DB. OK, now for the fun part, connecting to the database and creating our tables. Let's initialize our SQLite database using sqlx.connect. The first argument is the driver we are going to use. The second argument is the name of the database. This function wraps the standard SQL open and verifies the connection for us. If there is an error, we log it and exit. Let's import the SQLite driver. Now that the database connection is ready, let's create the tables in the database. Here, we use db.mustexec to execute our schema creation SQL. This method panics if there's an error, which is handy for development but should be used cautiously in production. We explained this in episode 69. I do not prefer creating database tables like this in the application. I like to maintain the migration separately. We are showing this for the demonstration. It is an individual's choice. Next, let's see how we can insert a record. We again use must exec. Here is the query for inserting records in the author's table. $1 and $2 are placeholders for parameters. These parameters are defined here. When the code runs, it replaces the placeholders with real parameters. Now let's see how we can use transactions to insert records. Must begin starts a new database transaction. This ensures that all the subsequent queries either succeed or fail. Commit finalizes the transaction. The changes are permanently applied to the database if all statements in this block succeed. If any statement within the transaction failed, the transaction would have been rolled back, undoing all the changes made during the transaction. Let's add a few statements in the transaction block. Here, we insert data into the authors, books and members tables using the transaction. Let's run the code. This creates the database file. Let's examine it.
We will query the authors table. Here are the entries in the table we inserted. Let's check the books table. Entries are there. It means the transaction was successful. Now let's see how the query works. We have defined a slice of authors to receive the result. Here we retrieve all the authors using select. The first argument is the author's slice and then the query. This function maps the result rows into our author's slice of author structs automatically. Then we handle the error. Finally, we print the authors. This is where SQLX shines, reducing boilerplate. Let's see this working. Since we are creating the tables every time, we will remove the database file before every execution. On executing the code, we can see all authors are printed here as we have queried. In real-world scenario, we don't query all the rows, rather we query using the WHERE clause. Let's see how we can query a book using its title. We use GET function. Similar to SELECT, we pass the receiver object, then the query. In the query $1 is a placeholder similar to the MUST exec function. In this case, the last parameter is title of the book that replaces $1 in the query. Then we handle the error and print the book. Now let's see if this works. Here is the book that we got as the result of the query. Now we will look at how to make a reusable SQL statement and how to use it. PrepareX runs the preparation on the database. It allows us to execute from a single statement object concurrently on many connections by creating the statements on new connections automatically. Here is the query. This question mark is the placeholder to pass parameters to the query. It returns a statement object, which can be used to execute the query multiple times with different parameter values. It also returns an error. Query row X executes the prepared query with a parameter value 1 and returns a single row result. The value 1 replaces the question mark placeholder in the query. Next, we use StructScan to map the columns in the database row to the fields in the author struct. It uses the struct tags to match database column names to struct fields. If a match isn't found or if there's a type mismatch, an error is returned. We handle this error and then print the retrieved author. Now, when we run this, the last line shows the record fetched using the prepared query. We missed the separator before the prepared query code. Let's add that. Next, we query multiple records using the IN clause. Here we defined a variable IDs. It is a slice of integers representing the IDs of authors to be retrieved from the authors table. SQLX.in is used to create the query. The first argument is the query with a question mark placeholder. The subsequent argument is IDs slice. This function returns query, the generated query string with placeholders expanded, args, a slice of arguments corresponding to the placeholders, and an error if the query generation fails. Next, we call dbRebind to adjust the query's placeholder syntax to match the specific database driver being used. Now, we use db.queryx that executes the query with the provided arguments and returns a rouse object. args is one of the return values of the in function. QueryX returns rows. Here we loop over the retrieved rows and print each record. 
Now we will explore named queries starting with structures. Suppose we want to fetch all books that belong to the author with ID 1. Here, we define the structure book with author ID set to 1. This instance of the book is assigned to P. We use the function named query. The first argument is the query. The thing to be noted is the placeholder is colon author ID. It takes the author ID from the structure P, executes the query, and returns a rouse object to iterate over the results. Here, we iterate over each record in the result set and print the record. Similarly, we can do named queries with maps as well. Here, we're going to query authors by name. This is a map with string as key and interface as value. In this map, we set name to J.K. Rowling. This named query is similar to the previous one. This named query is similar to the previous one. Here we look for the key name from the second argument, M. Then we iterate and print the records. SQLX also supports named exec with a map. We are going to update a record. In this map, we have set two keys, email and ID. We are going to update the email of the author with ID 1. In named exec function, the query is provided. There are two placeholders here, one for the email and one in the where clause for the ID. These are replaced by the map M. In the end, we print the number of affected records. There is an interesting feature the SQLX provides with named exec that lets us do bulk inserts. We will insert a few members in the table. Here, we define a slice of members that need to be inserted. In the named exec function, in values we have put the placeholders name and email. These placeholders take values from the slice of members and add all of them. Let's print all members to see if members were added to the table. Let's see an example of a delete statement. This is similar to must exec but returns an error with the result. Here is the placeholder, $1. Let us run the code. Here is the result of in query. These are the records fetched using named query with struct. Then, named query with map. This shows one row was updated using the update statement. These records were inserted in bulk. Finally, a member was deleted. That's it for this video. We've covered how SQLX makes working with databases simpler and more efficient. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next. Happy coding!